Hello, I'm Kristen from Kristen Kane Style. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. So today, uh, I am going to talk about um, sort of a spring clean for your closet, but not in the big daunting. Like I think I hear spring cleaning and it just overwhelms me and I think, oh my gosh, my house needs so many spring cleaning things. There's just no way I even wanna get involved in one little cleanup. But today I'm gonna talk about a, a pretty simple spring cleaning for the closet. And I'm mentioning it here, I'm, I'm doing it as a video because sometimes I need like a checklist. I need somebody to give me like the prescription, like, okay, Kristen, today's the day you're gonna go in and actually do this work in your closet and here are the steps. So I'm gonna give you the steps for a less daunting version of a spring clean within your closet. This is not a wardrobe edit. It is not about making outfits. It is not a complete, you know, um, Marie Kondo purge. It is just how to take control of your closet and make it look and feel better so that you feel like you're headed into spring having done a little bit of spring cleaning. This is just as valuable if you live in the Southern Hemisphere and you are headed into winter. Um, you can do this as a pre-winter clean, same deal. So uh, the the first thing I wanna mention is that it's this is designed to work through quickly. I don't want this to feel like a big giant weekend long task that is just going to be draining and overwhelming and it's going to be difficult to follow through. So this is designed to be done pretty quickly. And to that end, I am the timer queen. I believe in timers for basically everything. My family makes fun of me on the daily that I have a timer set all the time. Siri and I, the only relationship we have really is around timers. So. I believe you should work, do this work with a timer and I suggest 10 minute increments so that you are really focused and working as quickly as you can through that 10 minutes to get as much done as you can and you're keeping yourself accountable in 10 minute chunks. And before you start, I would decide how long you want to spend. So maybe even set like your kitchen timer to the full amount of time. I wanna spend 45 minutes, I wanna spend an hour, whatever the case is set that timer for the full amount of time. And then on your phone or a smaller timer, you know, that you have right with you, set 10 minute increments so that you can work through in chunks. So I'm gonna run through the steps and kind of give you just a, an overview. These are not some sort of earth shattering, brand new tips and tricks. Like I said, this is just sort of a checklist. So if you're kind of feeling like you're ready to do a little spring cleaning, this will walk you through the steps. So set your timer and then you can go through the steps. So the first step is to remove, and this step, honestly, if this is the only thing you did and then you were done, this would make your closet feel better and feel a little bit spring cleaned. So you're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and you are going to remove anything that is not clothing, anything that does not support you getting dressed out of your closet. And if you say, Kristen, there's just no way I can do that. I don't have much storage space in my house. I need to use my closet for things that are not clothing. That's fine. Put them all in one place. Put them all in a bin or a box or a container or on a specific shelf or off to one side so that they're not interfering with your mind. They're not physically interfering in the way and they're not getting in the way in your mind when you go in to get dressed. When you go in to get dressed, your clothing and the things you use to get dressed every day are front and center all in one place. And so whether it's gift wrap, whether it's sporting equipment, whether it's, you know, all of those things that don't belong in our closets. My yoga mat lives in my closet, but it is out of the way. It's not getting in the way when I go to get dressed or make an outfit. I don't have to move it to get to my shoes or move it to get to my belt. So whatever those items are that are not clothing, that don't support you getting dressed, get them out of your closet or put them off to one side, make them you know, a separate area, a separate little you know, contained zone so that your clothing can be front and center. The second is to take one section at a time. So while you're doing the work that I'm gonna walk you through, don't pull every single piece out of your closet. Now, I read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I know Marie Kondo's um, methods, you know, pretty much inside and out. And I believe there is a time for getting all of your clothing out and putting it on your bed or putting it on your floor and going through every piece of clothing from every season and really doing the work that way, the spark joy, you know, the whole thing. This is not what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here is a, a less daunting version of kind of a spring cleanup. So in that case, I would work with one category at a time so that you can get it out, work on it, put it away. And then if you need to go pick your kids up from school or you need to go run to the store for something or it's time to you know go to soccer practice or whatever the thing is, you are not left with this gigantic 
overwhelming pile and you can't go to bed until you clean it up. So I would start with tops because most women have way more tops than they have of anything else. And so I would start with tops and I would start by sleeve length. If you have an enormous amount of tops, I would start with the sleeveless tops. And then I would do the short sleeve tops and then the three quarter length tops and then the long sleeve tops. If you have enough tops where that feels like it might make it more manageable. If not, just pull out all the tops and as you're sorting through them, sort them into piles of tank tops, short sleeve, three quarter length sleeve, full length sleeve, so that when you put them back, that's gonna be part of one of the next steps. So step number three is pull out all the tops. So get all your tops out and begin to pay attention to what sleeve lengths you have. Now this again is not a full closet edit. This is a let's make it look better than it did. So to that end, you wanna turn everything right side out. You wanna have all the clothing hanging on the hanger right side out, and then you want it all facing the same direction. So if the hanger hook is you know, going this way and the front of the garment is here, then all of the clothing, the hanger hook goes this way and the front of the garment faces that way. Which it doesn't matter how you do it, but do it all the same way so that everything has a cohesive look and it's easy to see what's in the closet when you're going to get dressed. So number four, um, I've kind of already mentioned, it is to you know bring order to the pieces and get them all right side out. And the, the big number four is matching hangers. So this isn't even a go buy matching hangers. I don't even want you to pause long enough to do that. I want you to just use what's in your closet right now and maybe put all the sleeveless tops on one hanger, you know, one kind of hanger. If you have, let's say tubular plastic hangers and you have blue and gray and white and pink, maybe all the tank tops go on the blue and all the short sleeves go on the white and all the three quarter length sleeves go on the gray, you know, whatever you wanna do, but make it cohesive when you look at it with regards to the hangers. And so, and also hang as much as possible. I really find that if you can see it when you walk into your closet, you're more apt to wear it. So I have lots of clients who keep sweaters and, and t-shirts and lots of things and jeans folded in drawers, not even in their closet. My dresser happens to live in my closet because I wanted it all in one place. But if your dresser is out in your room and your clothing, hanging clothing is in your closet, it makes it difficult to pick an outfit. It's not easy to, to grab an outfit and see what it's going to look like together without going back and forth and unfolding and that sort of thing. So I like to have the clothing that you wear on a daily basis hanging and then workout clothes and, you know, clothing for special events or occasions like skiing or, you know, certain activities, those clothes could go, could be folded in a drawer. Anyway, that's just a separate bit about hanging. So I like to hang as much as possible, matching hangers. Uh, number five is to put the tops back. And so as you have those tops out, edit out anything that is a definite no. Like when you're rehanging them, if you think this thing has had it, like it's seen better days, it's got holes, it's got armpit stains, it doesn't fit me anymore, get rid of those pieces. Do sort of a preliminary edit. Again, this is not a giant closet edit deep dive. But if you see things that you're not going to wear again that aren't in good shape, get those out. There's no reason to put those on a, a matching hanger and hang them back in the closet only to do that work later. So step five is to put everything, the tops back in the closet by sleeve length. So whether you go sleeveless to long sleeve or long sleeve to sleeveless, whatever works best for your brain, put those back in um, order so that you, when you go to get dressed, if it's warm and you want a tank top or you're wearing it as a layer, they're all together. You're not digging through everything to find the, the sleeve length that you're looking for. And I would also pay attention to color at this point. You know, in the retail world, we arrange by color depending on what the, you know, what the display situation is. So my closet is arranged from light to dark. So I start with whites and creams and I work through, you know, the paler colors and the grays and whatever, you know, all the way back to black. So whatever works for you with regards to color, but it makes it easier to get dressed and it's prettier visually if you have sort of um, arranged things by color, a light to dark or dark to light, whatever works for you, rainbow, whatever works for you. But if you arrange by color, it makes it easier to find what you're looking for and it makes it prettier when you open it. And then the sixth step would be to do the same thing essentially with folds. So whatever you have that's folded, whether it's jeans or t-shirts or that sort of thing, pull out that category. Now t-shirts, I guess by rights should go with the tops, but if you're doing it folded or hung, you could divide it that way. There's no right way to do it. It's really whatever way is going to work best for you and whatever way is going to actually get it done and make you feel better about your closet and feel like it's had a little spring refresh. 
So if pants are what we're talking about next, then pull out the pants, whether they're folded or hung, and decide you know what works best for you, whether folded or hung. You can hang on hooks, you can hang on hangers, you can fold on you know as a stack on a shelf, you can fold kind of like file KonMari style in a drawer, whatever feels like it works best for you. Keep in mind that when you can see it, you're more apt to wear it. So whatever you can get out visually so you can really look at it in your closet like it would be on display in a store is going to make it a little easier. And, you know, kind of get those things um, hung and folded neatly and then put those back. Do the same with the tops that are folded. So sweaters, for instance, if you've got a toppling sweater pile, which I personally right this minute have in my closet because I keep grabbing sweaters and I fold them back up, but I, I really could stand a 10 minute chunk of time to really refold the sweaters. So the, the bigger, chunkier ones, you're gonna either want on the bottom or in a stack of their own, and then the lighter, more delicate ones, either on the top of the chunky ones or in a stack just, just on their own. And the ones you wear most often should probably be closer to the top just because it's gonna be easier and keep the stacks you know, in better shape as you pull things out to wear them. But again, 10 minutes. Give it a quick fold, you know, quick once over with the folding. If there are things that you're not actually going to wear again, it's a good time to get those out. And that could be that you'll wear it again, but you're not gonna wear it again until next season because it's already starting to change the season um, at your house. And that big, really chunky sweater is no longer going to be something you're wearing or that really lightweight, delicate, you know, sweater that you wore in the summer, you're not going to wear as it gets cooler. If you live in the Southern hemisphere, then that could get cleaned, you know, laundered, whatever you do with it to, to maintain it and then put away. You could pull that out at this point too. And then shoes. So then I would go through and I'd find all the matches. You know, I, I am in a lot of closets and often the shoes are sort of a big jumbled pile on the floor. And so I would go through and find all the matches and kind of dust them off if they need a little dusting, if some need polishing, you know, set aside a time to do that, but really get them back together, you know, find the pairs and get them back together. And then if you keep your shoes in shoe boxes, you know, put the shoes back in the shoe boxes and arrange those neatly. If you don't keep your shoes in shoe, shoe boxes, totally fine, totally personal preference, just arrange them so you can see them and so you can access them easily. If there are shoes you won't be wearing for the season coming, you know, up ahead, then you could get rid of those, you know, put those in another room or in a box, you know, in the basement or whatever. Um, just so that your shoes feel like you can actually find the shoes that you're looking for when you go to get dressed. And then number nine would be if you have extra time. So you set your timer for 60 minutes and you've only used 45, what's next? You could do jewelry, you could do scarves, you could do belts, whatever category feels like when you go to you know, use those things, you're a little overwhelmed and you tend to maybe only wear one necklace because the rest of them are a jumbled mess. Set your timer for 10 minutes and untangle those necklaces so that the next time you go to get dressed, you can actually wear those necklaces. Or the same with belts. If you wear two belts and you have 20, pay, take 10 minutes and go through the belts and get rid of the ones that you're not going to wear anymore. And, you know, make sure that the ones you do wear all the time are still working and look nice and functional and all of that. Um, so you could use your extra time for that. You could also use the extra time for lingerie or um, socks or workout clothes or pajamas, any other area that you didn't hit in those, you know, as you went through the main categories of clothing, if you've got a little extra time, and if not today, then tomorrow or two days from now, set a timer for 10 minutes, open up that drawer and just give it a once over. Socks that don't have a mate, get rid of those. You know, pajamas that aren't comfortable, get rid of those. Workout clothes that have lost their elastic, get rid of those. And then when it's time to do like a deep dive, real edit and, you know, decide what you're missing and all that, great, you can do that later. But for right now, everything will feel better because you'll have gotten rid of the obvious, these need to go pieces, and you'll have refreshed and refolded and, you know, kind of breathed some new life into the pieces that are left in your closet. And it just looks and feels better. And so then, you know, it feels like you're ready for the next season. And it really doesn't take that long. That 10 minute timer is gold. You can get a lot done in 10 minutes, put on a podcast, put on some music and just work for, you know, for that 10 minute chunk until the timer goes off and then set a new 10 minute chunk and, and work through whatever your big um, amount of time that you've allotted is. And you'll be surprised how much you get done. I would love to hear how it goes for you. I'd love to hear if you use timers, if you're a timer queen like I am. Uh, I'm, I used to be a little ashamed of it. Now I'm not. I actually love beating the timer. And so uh, that's it. Let's see. Instagram. Um, 
I'm on Instagram every Tuesday at noon Mountain Time doing a live style Q&A. So if you have a question you'd like me to answer there, you can drop it in the comments below or you can come over to Instagram. I am at Kristen Kane Style. You can come over to Instagram and on Monday I post um, a question box and you can drop in your question and I'll answer it on Tuesday. Anything style. I, I love answering the questions. We have had lots of really great ones over the last six months or so that I've been doing this. And they're all saved to my Instagram feed. So if you look every Tuesday, there is a saved video that was the live. And I write out in the question box all the questions that I answer that day. So if you look through those and there are questions that you're curious about, you can just watch that uh, day's episode, so to speak, and find out what I said about it. Uh, if you'd like more information about style therapy, which is my one-on-one -on -one style coaching transformation package, uh, I will drop that in the um, comments in the description box below so that you can check that out. Uh, it's pretty amazing, actually. It's a one day, really, like start to finish one day to take you from a place where you really are overwhelmed and stuck and feeling kind of crummy about your wardrobe to a place where you can look and feel amazing every time you get dressed. And it's my favorite thing in the whole world to do. So I would love, um, if I can help you, I would love to. And that's it. I'll be back with a new video next Friday. Uh, I hope you have a great week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.